win souls for the Lord. Pray till the Lord. Whichever area you have on challenges, the Lord is here. Is going to touch you. Is going to touch me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, you are the great God of wonders. Thank you for today. Thank you for the past. Thank you for the future. Because you, you have brought us together to sharpen us, to shape us, to reveal more of your mind unto us and empower us to go after your will, your word, your way, your wisdom. So, Father, we pray that your mighty presence will envelop this place so that no minister goes the way he came. We all be revived. We'll all be strengthened. As we also pray, the convener, our GM, And the church workers will be empowered. And going back from here, we're going back, sharpen the tools. Thank you for the answer. We are very grateful because you have done it for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we keep standing this morning, we are going to worship the name of the Lord. Just stay fast, love, our friend God, never see.
let's all the sea Jesus in you.
The Lord will touch you this morning. I say you will be transformed this day. His power will be come upon your life. And your ministry, your profession will never remain the same. Your profession will never remain the same. Let's have our seats. We praise the name of the Lord who has brought us to this point at this minister's conference. And you are all welcome to this minister's conference. And I want to assure you that God's power will come upon you. And you are going to become more productive in Jesus' name. I want to introduce some of the dignitaries we have. We have a lot of our pastors from outside deeper life. If you are from outside deeper life as a pastor, a bishop, a church founder, camp chairman, and you know all the camp uh, pastors, please can you raise your hand? You are pastor from outside deeper life, please can we have you raise your hand? God bless you in Jesus' name. I would have said that you are not crapping. We have here also, you know, we have here Pastor Chukuka Nicholas, watchman, charismatic state pastor. Please, can you rise and let them see you? God bless you. We have all our state overseers from the southeast. We have Pastor Magnus Mwoke. He is the state overseer of Ebony II. Can you <laughs> praise the Lord? We have also our state overseer from Abia One. Pastor I.K. Ibe. God bless you. We also have our pastor from state over, the state overseer, Eboyitu, Pastor Korombos Okpara. You are welcome, sir. We have Pastor Chike Onwa Sanya, is the state pastor of Anambra. Anambra one. We have Pastor Sylvester Odeme, State Overseer Enugu two. We have Pastor Michael Amadi, State Overseer Anambra two. We have Pastor Obina Nkenjika, the State Overseer Abia two. And we have other people that are here. I believe God that as we have come to this conference, God will use his servant to empower every one of us. Shall we please be on our feet as we take our congregational song? Let's stand up on our feet as we take the congregational song. We are singing the second song. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. They were gathered in the upper chamber. 
as commanded by the risen Lord and the promise of the Father, there they sought with one accord when the Holy Ghost from heaven descended like a rushing wind and tongue of fire. So, dear Lord, we seek thy blessings. Come with thy glory now. Our hearts inspire. As Elijah, we will raise the altar for our testimony clear and true. Christ the Savior, loving healer, coming Lord and baptizer too, ever flowing grace and full salvation for a re for rain race the love has planned. Blessed at breast adore thee and our songs of worship raised. Let the crowd of glory now descending fill our heart with holy ecstasy. Come in all thy glory fullness. Blessed Holy Spirit, have thy way. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire from heaven fall. We are waiting and expecting. Now in faith, dear Lord, we call. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. On thy promise we depend. From the glory of thy presence, let the Pentecostal fire fall or descend. Oh. 
And have your seat. We want to welcome the camp choir to come and give out their song. Camp choir, please. Let's come up to this. And uh, while we are singing the congregational song, the camp chairman, Reverend Emmanuel, Ede just entered. Sir, you are welcome. God bless you. Let's welcome the camp choir. Let's welcome the camp choir.
thank you, Kankwaya. Appreciate Kankwaya. Just a little talk with Jesus. We set everything right. Praise the Lord. Today, you will be empowered. Yeah. I say today, you are going to receive power for productivity in his service in Jesus' name. Yeah. Who will receive the power? Are you sure? Yeah. Let's be on our feet because the man of God this morning is loaded and is going to inject you and the power of God will come into your heart. I want you to close your eyes and say, Lord, empower me as we receive the man of God. Close your eyes, tell the Lord, empower me. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're here for you. Son, we're here for you. Holy Ghost, we're here for you. Search us, lead us, empower us so that we will effectively handle everything you've given us to do. We pray that the excellent ministry will be established in the church in this nation. And then in the nations of the world, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And everybody shout, Amen. Amen. We're looking at Hebrews. Thank you. Consider we're looking at Hebrews chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8. We're looking at verse 6. It says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. You'll see there is talking about Christ, our Savior, our Lord, not only our Savior and Lord, our forerunner our example and our model it says he has obtained if we're going to be in the excellent ministry we have to obtain you cannot attain it by your own power by your own strength and by your own ingenuity we obtain a more excellent ministry you never obtain anything except you desire you never obtain anything except you are willing to abandon the things that are not excellent. We have to leave the bad for the good. We have to leave even the good for the better. We have to leave the past for the present. And that is how we obtain that more excellent ministry. If you are satisfied with what you have, if you are satisfied with everything you've done, you're not even won't have the eagerness, you'll not have the desire, you'll not have the passion, you'll not have the drive, you'll not want to pay the price to obtain what is higher, what is greater, the more excellent mercy. Now says by how much he also is the mediator of a better covenant. Once you stay with the old covenant, the abolished covenant, the Old Testament covenant, once you stay with that and you are before Calvary and you are before even the open, the first page of Matthew, you're still there in the old, you're still there dwelling in Malachi, you're still there dwelling in Exodus and Leviticus and you have not crossed over to that covenant which is new you'll be there but you'll not be following after christ you're doing everything that came before the cross and before calvary but it says now he is the mediator is no more aaron and is no more the sons of aaron and is no more the old testament old covenant theology it is the better covenant the new covenant 
and is the mediator for authors and ambassadors of that mediation of the mediator and then we we'll preach that better covenant it says which was established upon better promises have you seen that word better there a more excellent ministry better and it is a better covenant and it is the promise of God that he gave at Calvary and he finished it and finalized it and gave that to us now and we are now called as sons of God, daughters of God, ministers of God, servants of God, ambassadors in Christ that we will go to proclaim what Christ will be proclaiming today if he were in the world in the physical. In fact, he tells us in First Peter chapter 2 and it says in verse 21, for even here unto were ye called, he called us to salvation, he called us to service and he says here is where we are called to for because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example, leaving us a model that ye should follow his steps, that now in life we follow his steps, in ministry we follow his steps, and in the preaching of the gospel we follow his steps, in the content of the gospel that we preach we follow his steps, if we are following any other personality, even in the Bible, if we're following Moses and if we're following the Levitical law, if we're following those old covenant people, we're not following Christ because he came to establish, he came to give us the better covenant established upon better promises. And he says, this is what to do. And this is what to follow. I pray the Lord will so touch our hearts. He'll so turn our hearts. He'll so transform our hearts that we will follow without an ear's breath. And without going this way or that way, I will follow Christ all the way through in this ministry, the excellent ministry in Jesus' name. And we're coming to the message today, and it is the compulsory spiritual experiences of an excellent minister. The compulsory spiritual experiences of an excellent ministry. Three things we're looking at. We're looking at number one, the supremacy and the of God's only begotten son. God's only begotten son, supreme, higher than all, higher than Moses, higher than Aaron, higher than Joshua, higher than the angels, higher than anyone that had ever lived on the face of the earth. I had an Adam and Eve is supreme. God has given him that supremacy. Number two is the salvation by grace for obedient believing sons. Salvation. Salvation is for all. Why has not everyone gotten that salvation? Because there is a word from him. And that word, the word of grace, he gives us, he calls us, he says, repent ye and believe the gospel. And as we him in obedience to his call, in obedience to his word, in obedience to what he's telling us, and we believe on him, we we'll become obedient, believing sons. Number three, in the sanctification for graciously open blood bought servants. We're looking at number one here. Number one is the supremacy of God's only begotten son. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 1 and we're looking at uh, verse 1. It says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto, unto the uh, fathers by the prophets. You know what he's saying? He said, in time past, 
he spoke by the prophets. Look at verse 2. It says, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son. It says, it's gone higher. It's revealing the kind of salvation that the prophets were examining and searching whether it was for them or not. It says it spoke to the fathers by those prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken unto us. He's speaking unto us by his son, whom he has appointed. He has appointed whom he appointed no man appointed him and no nation appointed him Israel did not appoint him they crucified him Israel did not exalt him they slew him Israel did not anoint appoint and engage the Lord Jesus Christ the appointment of the Lord the appointment of the Savior it was not by voting even voting by angels or voting by men it was the appointment of God that it says whom he has appointed heir of all things possessor of all things by whom also he made the worlds look at verse Three, in verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person that he is Christ the son the savior our Lord is the express image of God's person everything the father wanted done he did if you're thinking of the will of God Jesus is the expression of the will of God. Is salvation will of God? Yes, because Jesus is the expression of the will of God. Is healing the will of God? Yes, because he did that. And Jesus is the expression of the will of God. Is holiness the will of God in every generation for everyone? Yes, because Jesus is the expression of the will of God. And he's upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, not Christ, an angel, whatever the name of the angel, he by himself alone purged our sins. Not, um, not Jesus and the founder of a denomination, the founder of a religion, but Jesus by himself. If you are praying for salvation, you pray only in the name of Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. If you are praying for any blessing from the Father, any blessing from heaven, you pray in the name of Jesus and Jesus only because he by himself himself alone he purged our sins and now he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high we're talking about Christ and we're talking about his supremacy the supremacy of God's only begotten son look at three things here number one we're looking at uh, the exalted position of the anointed son exalted exalted position of the anointed son number two is the experienced purging by his acceptable sacrifice number three is the extraordinary power of the almighty sustainer look at number one there number one is the exalted position of the anointed son it tells us in philippians chapter to two reading there from verse 9 wherefore God also has highly exalted him God also God if you believe in God as the creator if you believe in God as the disposer of all things if you believe in God as the possessor of the whole earth because he made the walls and the fullness thereof if you say you believe in God here is what God has done if you put down 
who God has exalted, you are not worth God. If you shatter what God is putting together, you are not of God. It says, wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. He has given Christ, his only begotten son, a name above every name. In verse 10, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Give me a good amen. amen. And your knee is who to, is to bow first. You know, there are people, they want that enemy to bow, and they are not bowing to the name of Jesus. They're not surrendered. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. They do not bow the knee. They do not subject themselves to Christ as Savior, Christ as Lord, and Christ as Commander. And while they're standing firm, adamant in their own mind, adamant and they stand like that and they will not bend for Christ. They want the name of Jesus to work for them and everything to bend before them. It doesn't happen that way. You are the one to bow first. All your desires, all your aspiration, everything, all your ambition, everything, your thought, I want to be, I want to do, I want to go, I want to let that one bow. Put everything beneath the feet of Christ and say, Lord, not my will, but as thou wilt. And it is when you have your mind, your heart, your life, your ambition, your personality bowing unto the Lord, then you can come in the place of authority and everything you say shall bow, will bow in Jesus' name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And then in verse 11, it says, and that every tongue should confess before you tell other people to confess Christ, your own tongue too, should confess him and confess him as the one that can forgive and confess him 